Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're in a data center because I have a server over here it's an HP DL380 generation 10 it's brand new and we have um, looked at this before I did a review on it a walkthrough but today we're gonna be expanding it as you can see here in the front there's only room for eight drives there we're gonna be expanding that to 16 drives and we're gonna be putting in a shitload of SSDs in this. Uh, I have a fortune worth of SSDs to put in it. Well, maybe a small fortune. But, and then we're gonna put in a rate controller for a DAS, and that's a 12 gigabit SAS controller that we're gonna be putting in the back. But as this server already has all six PCI Express ports occupied by fiber optic HBAs, well, we are gonna have to expand that as well. So this is gonna be quite an operation on this server. So, uh, so let's jump right to it. So let's open it up, see what we have. I know what we have, but I'm showing you. We have two CPUs, we have 128 gigabytes of memory. We have one slot here for hard drives and we have the six HBA cards here in the two riser cards. So what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting in one more of these uh, drive bays right here. We're gonna be putting in an expansion card to use that one more drive bay up there. And to do that, we have to use this piece of space over here. There is another riser card available for this slot where you get two PCI Express ports over here. And I have that in some boxes over here. So let's see what I have. So here we have some boxes from our local distributor, Eros. Um, let's see, this should be the 12 gigabit expander card. Yep, we have the expander card here. Um, there. It works the way that you take port one and port two from your existing RAID controller and you put that into the expander card and it expands it out to these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other ports. So you get like, how many is that anyway? Seven times four, 28 drives out of these two ports. Mm, awesome. It comes with a couple of cables and that box is empty. Uh, the manual is not a manual, but just um, whatever. First box. Second box. I have had this open. That's the riser card. This thing. And we're going to be looking closer at that. Funny enough, it has some of these locking mechanisms too. Um, probably not going to need that. Yeah, it tells me where I can go and learn more about this. It would be so nice if they had just included a manual. Actually a USB, a nice little USB with the instructions on it so that I could use that USB for something completely different afterwards. Then we have this cable here, which is uh, for the expansion. And we have a internal SAS connector. That's the box for the hard drives. Oh, the hard drives. I um, haven't, well, I have the hard drives in my PC bag over here. I drove directly down here, so I didn't want these hard drives sitting in the parking lot where I live. So I had them inside because each of these hard drives were, well, they are way over a thousand dollars each. These are one point 1.92 terabyte uh, Intel hard drives. Uh, they were about 8,500 Danish kronas each. That's almost $1,500. Don't want that sitting in the parking lot. That's two, three times the worth of my car. So in the server, the best thing I could see was that I needed the SAS extender to be sitting here and I would like it to be the top card here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be moving all of these cards one space over that way. So, but first we need to expand that one. 
and um, that's a big deal because we need to take part of the server apart we have this piece of metal back here that has to come out so uh, we'll start with that pop this riser card out first release that gently and we can kind of see two of the screws here that we need to take out to remove this piece of uh, metal well actually only that one this one I believe is something else yeah we don't need that so a number 10 Tox will do the trick there. and it has um, has a couple of other screws as well that we need to to remove if I can remember where they are Oh, it, it does actually seem like I need to remove this one as well. I forgot that. Oh. And down on the circuit board. Not that great. There. There is one on the side out here as well. Here. that was that it I forget seems like there is one more oh it's in the very middle very visible so taking those four screws out this is easy removable so we take out this piece of metal and uh, we're not gonna be using that more anymore actually in the back with the riser card There is a little bag and that contains another piece of metal. This one. And we need to put that in instead. And it's it's way smaller and it sits right there. So we're gonna be mounting that. Um, it, it only uses two screws. So one here and one in here. Now that is in, then we have the riser card itself and um, something to keep it dry and some tape to keep it ugly. Uh, I'll try and remove that. So as you can see this riser card only comes with the riser card that is supposed to be going over uh, the power supplies which are right down here. So this is a two slot riser card and these are X8s. There are some power outtakes. Uh, for the, I'm guessing battery power, because there's a battery up in front, so you can um, you can have some battery power coming out that way, and that comes over here. But there is no riser card on the other side, so we need to take the riser card out of the existing riser here and put that over in that one. So we're going to be taking out these fiber optic HBAs to. Um, to move that riser card over. So this server was put together in the Czech Republic or Slovakia, I forget. Um, but they always put these screws in and um, it's a real drag when you're in a data center and didn't bring your Tox screwdriver. Right now it doesn't matter because I knew that these were gonna be here and I was gonna be taking everything apart anyway. So, but they're not really necessary. This one does just fine. It's not gonna go anywhere. So, but yeah, we're gonna take these out and I'm gonna try and remember which one was the bottom one. Okay, so the top one is number four, five, and six. So, number six, we wanna move over to the next slot. So, I'm gonna take that out. That's number six. And then this one is number five. And this one is number four. Someone recently asked me what these were. And these are the HPE. And they are the 1100Q 16 gigabit 2 port FC HPAs. Um, 
looks like this. So, yeah, made in Malaysia. Four number five. So we can take this riser card out. Let's see if this chalks is the right one. I do believe this is. Ah, it will do. This screwdriver is not really meant for Torx, but the Torx keep falling out of it. So we take this one out, dispose of that one. You actually not need that for this project anyway. So we can put this in here. And it lines up perfectly with the screw holes. So that is okay. Yeah, the riser card is ready, so we can put in some ports. We need to remove these two fillers as well. And well, actually, as we're gonna be putting in all the cards in this, we can remove all the fillers. But those two that goes over the power supply, they are screwed in. So we need our little Torx again here to remove those. And those we are actually gonna be putting in because there is nothing to keep those cards in place. So. We want those in securely. So that's now uh, we're gonna take this card that was the last one and we're gonna pop that in right here. And then we need the rate controller. Okay, I just freaked out for a little bit because I couldn't find the rate controller anywhere. Uh, when I realized that we actually saw that last time, it was sent directly to this data center, so the rate controller is right here. And I was out looking in my car and everything if I've forgotten to bring in a package. But this is the rate controller. It's a... Um, I'm not sure if it says what it is. Maybe it says that on the box. No, this is just a box from the cable. I, I already disposed of the box for the rate controller. But it's an um, HP external rate controller. Oh, it's right there. This is a P... 408 EPSR Generation 10. I uh, have no idea if that's a good thing. So we are gonna be putting that in at the very bottom. The very last card is gonna be that one. There. And I'm gonna put in those two screws because there is nothing to keep. Oh, maybe there is. No, nope. no, there is nothing to keep those in place. So a couple of screws will be good. So now I'm gonna take the bottom of these HPAs and move over into this one and I'm gonna drop those two down to make room for the expander card over here. As with the other one, these are also screwed in place. Um, of course it's good for shipping that they don't... There's a smaller chance of them wiggling their way out, but well, it's a drag when you reach a data center and you forgot your screwdriver. So let's have the SAS expander out of here and um, these are pretty cool. A rate controller can do a lot more than the eight drives that you can connect with just two plugs. With a SAS expander like this, it can expand that. This expands it from those eight drives and up to 28 drives, which is um, quite a lot. So this is... Um, the maximum number of drives in this server with just one expander card would be 28 drives. Well, maybe you can put some of the system board as well, but there is room for a lot of drives. But let's put this in. Okay, I guess it's in. It just doesn't sit as well as I would have hoped. So maybe we'll just give that a screw. It's probably not a bad idea. There's going to be cables hanging out. Um, inside the server so uh, yeah. just to make sure that this doesn't leave us in the middle of the night cool let's put this back this is the first PCI and this is the new dual um, PCI to go in the back PCI riser card with metal included
Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, got it. So now we have expanded it from having the first six slots to also have two slots over here. That's, um, that is pretty neat. So there's eight PCI Express ports coming out the back, plus the, the flex slum here, which is also a PCI Express port. So there is nine ports on the back here. And there is also four one gig ports. So it's, um, it's well equipped. Okay, this server has already gotten a name. So, but as I'm gonna be putting the discs here, I think I wanna just put this one over there and um, it, that would be fine. We need to pop that out, that one out, and it's just uh, two screws here on the top, and this comes out. So I'm gonna be putting it over here, and uh, we'll keep expanding on that one. Let's see this um, disc enclosure thing from the front. This is for two and a half inch drive. And it has something to keep it dry and it has a couple of screws that we are actually gonna need um, I'm a bit curious because they uh, they didn't put this there's we just released two screws on the top of it and they haven't put in two screws here on the top and they could have done that um, which um, I think is kind of weird why they didn't make two screw holes up here but they put two screw holes down here that goes into the bottom of the server. Um, I'm puzzled about that. So yeah, we're gonna pop that in. Uh, the two screws that we just took out the, the top, we don't need those anymore. So we pop that in. It's fairly simple. It doesn't go further than than it needs to. So well, maybe the screws wasn't necessary, but they would be a lot easier to put in than the one that they have put down here because. They are hard to get to. We need to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna pop this piece of plastic out. We are gonna need to do that anyway. And we can take this fan assembly out as well. Much better view and much easier access. So um, these two screws that uh, apparently it's very important to keep those dry. Okay. okay, it's in, I need to tighten it up. This is one of those weird screws where it has, it kind of has a torx and it has a flat head as well. Worst of both worlds. Okay, this went way easier than when I tried this yesterday. I did a server um, just like it in another data center, but a data center where I could not fit. Okay, so they're in and I can, with a flat head here, I can tighten them up. Urge. And the other one. There, perfect. So to um, to get moving, I will just remove all of these, and I'll put in solid state drives. And I want you to save those. Oh, that's they're gonna go 13 solid state drives in here, and they are all two terabytes or 1.92 terabyte solid state drives. These three drives are the operating system. That's a mirror, two drives in a mirror, and then there's a hot spare. So it's kind of, kind of keeping this uh, safe. So this is the drive, just unboxed it. It's an SSD DC S4600, and it's a 1.92 terabyte drive. And they're all like that. Uh, they are expensive as hell. I'll try and leave a link in the description. Okay, so as we need to get this um, moving, we need to connect this drive bay up here and keep this one connected. This is the rate controller that's mounted on the system board here. And this is port one and this is port two. Right now that goes up to this first drive bay up here. That's gonna be going over to the to the extender instead. So we're gonna take out drive two, port two and port one here. And the 
the cables are labeled as well this says port 2 and this says port 1 they're gonna be going in here and as the first two ports are, be go are gonna be going down here these are going in port 3 and port 4 which is in here it's uh, not that easy to get to but it is possible so we're gonna be doing that but first let's connect up the first two uh, ports here they were included and they are not the same length they are actually just a little bit um, not equal so I am gonna the long one is the one that's gonna go in here so that is gonna be port 2 and it's possible to with a little with a little luck and bending the cable just right to have it go into the slot and say click there not that hard but yeah and port one so this one goes into port two and this one goes into port one and try to make this look nice it's almost impossible but there um ish ish nice so now these two needs to go into port one and two as well uh, actually they need to go into port three and port four and that cable it's just a little bit too well I guess we'll have to make it this is one so that goes in this one and this one goes in up there so we'll persuade that And the cables need to go down here by the side so that they will be out of the way because the fan assembly and the air direction thing is gonna go on top of those so that is okay now we need to collect the last one and then luckily a couple of long cables are provided so there we go. have these nice protecting stuff on them And they uh, come from up here they are not the same length either so there is a port 2 and a port 1 so this is um, I thought this was weird port 2 is the top one here and that's port 4 on this one yeah this is weird um, but I made it but I made it work yesterday so I guess I'll be able to make it work again this is gonna go into port 1 there this one is going to go into port 2 there and the cable is going to go around around to the back and these are going to go into port 5 and 6 it's a bit of a wire mess but now everything is connected up and uh, Maybe now you can see why I choose to uh, to put a screw on this card because there's quite an amount of cables here that um, could persuade that card to, to pop out. So we don't need that. Okay, we can put the cover and the fan assembly back on. Let's start with the fan assembly. Okay. Make sure the cables are out of the way again. See if we can fit this muffler down there. It's not a muffler, it's a airflow regulator, let's call it that, I don't know. But this is all great, so cool. Okay, why did no one remind me to put in the power cable? Are you asleep out there? For crying out loud. So let's remove this again. And this again. Down on the system board there is a box 3, box 2 and a box 1. And this is gonna be going into box one. Oh, sorry. It's gonna be going into box two. And I need to bend it a little bit to, um, to persuade it to go in there. Let's get a better picture of that. There. Let's see if we can persuade that to go in there. That's gonna bring power to all the drives. It's kind of important. And it's gonna go into a power plug up here, which you now can't see. But now you can. So, there. Power connected, mounted. 
So let's try the fan assembly again. And the airflow regulator. There we go. I am dealing with all the things that I forgot. I forgot to, um, to connect this rate controller to the battery. The battery is up here, but what is powered through the system board. So there is a tiny little plug on the end of the car. The car is the one down here. So this little plug goes there. There, it's plugged in. And on the riser card itself, there's another little plug where it can go into those two white things down there. And it's gonna be hard for me to film that, but I'm gonna plug the, end, the other end of that cable into one of those white things. So, doing that. Okay, that's about the best I can do. So let's see if we can persuade that cable to go in there. There, piece of cake. <coughs> server is done. It's time for me to close it up. Okay, the server is connected right here. I haven't powered it on yet, but I have been plugging in new cables. The disk storage is here. We could just have a look at that. We haven't seen it this time. So, there are 25 drives right there and there are 25 drives in the other one. So here on the back of the server, I can see that we never draw the cables for these HPA, the DAS2 over here. But I'm gonna be plugging in the two external SAS ports that are going down into the storage box. And I have the cable here. Very nice mode, Model X cable, so we're gonna be putting that in. Okay, I have connected those. Uh, it's pretty dark in here, I don't know. It's those two connectors, and they right now, they end right here. I marked number one by uh, not having this protective cap on it anymore. So I took number one off, and number one is going in here. There, number one is connected. And then we're gonna take the cap off, and put number two. Uh, over there. Cool. Okay, so that looks pretty cool now. So uh, let's uh, go turn the server on. Okay, so. That was expanded and it looks like it's running in there. I'll have to uh, contact the dude that is going to be using this server. He has already installed some operating system on it, some, some kind of Linux stuff. Something that I don't know nothing about, but well, the one I upgraded yesterday worked perfectly. So he was able to see all those 50, 10 terabyte drives that was down in that storage, that dash, and also the 13, two terabyte SSDs and of course the tree that he uses for his operating system. So Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Join me over at Facebook where I apparently also have a page now and um, Have a nice day. Bye. Bye